and ultimately prevents cancer. Let's talk about the roles of vitamins B2 and B3. Hello, it's April 18, 2018, and this is Dr. Colleen Huber. I am a naturopathic medical doctor in Tempe, Arizona, and I want to talk to you about what makes cancer act differently than normal tissues and organs. Let's get to the origin of this. But first, what is a naturopathic medical doctor? You might be wondering. Well, naturopathic physicians attend a different four-year medical school than medical doctors or other physicians. Our four-year medical curriculum contains approximately twice as many classroom hours and twice as many courses as conventional medical schools. You might wonder, why is that? If each kind of doctor goes to school for four years, it is because we are in the classroom through almost all of those four years, whereas conventional medical students are in the classroom about two years and out working with patients the other two years. So they see many more patients than we naturopaths do during their training. We naturopaths see at least 700 patients before graduation as required. They see, on the other hand, several thousand people before graduation. You can see a curriculum comparison at this website where you can see links to various medical schools where they actually show their curricula and the number of hours spent in the classroom. That's naturopathicstandards.org. In naturopathic medical school, one main activity of all those classroom hours is digging into nutrition through five or six successive courses after the biochemistry courses. Nutrition is actually applied advanced biochemistry. Let's start with biochemistry and see what that is all about. So zooming into the metabolic pathways chart here, I want to call your attention today to two different pathways. Cancer goes in this direction, and normal healthy processes go in this direction. So if a person has a tumor, inside that tumor, there is a lot of this motion. However, outside of that tumor, in normal tissue, there is mostly this motion. Today, I want to show you what causes cancer in the first place. It's been known since 1931 when Nobel Prize biochemist Otto Warburg wrote in The Metabolism of Tumors, he wrote, There are a great many remote causes of cancer, but there is only one common cause into which all other causes of cancer merge, the irreversible injuring of respiration. Let's look now at what Dr. Warburg was talking about. He wasn't talking about this kind of respiration. He was talking about, let's zoom our attention in please, he was talking about this respiration. The respiration provides energy to a cell. This is what our normal cells do in order to function. It is a really beautiful process called oxidative phosphorylation, or you could think of it as simultaneous destruction and construction. The food we eat, no matter what kind of food, goes through a lot of processes and ends up here at acetyl-CoA. Now, don't worry too much about that molecule, except that it is the grand central station of your body. That is, all food trains pass through this station, whether carbohydrates or fats or proteins, all become this molecule, acetyl-CoA. Then, inside the mitochondria here, this yellow blob here, well, don't worry about that either too much, except that it is the power plant of the cell. Here, inside the mitochondria, all of our food, all of the whole natural food that we eat is broken down in a process called oxidation. That can be seen as the destruction of food. Now, oxidation is loss of electrons. So in the breakdown of food, electrons are lost or liberated from the molecules they were attached to. But that's okay because here is the electron transport chain where those electrons are now used in construction. A moment ago, we had destruction of food and now we have construction of energy. Let's look at this view of the electron transport chain. Electrons are hot commodities. Everybody wants them. Our bodies use them as currency in building energy and doing many tasks. So those electrons are used to phosphorylate a lower unit of energy to a higher unit of energy. That's called phosphorylation, or rather a process of building energy stores. And this is normal metabolism. This wonderful process is what is supposed to happen. Now let's look closer at the electron transport chain where this happens. Looking at this, we see right here where it says NADH and NAD, that requires niacin which is vitamin B3. And this part here, that requires FADH and FAD, which requires riboflavin, which is vitamin B2. If you do not have adequate B2 or B3, that is one possible cause of all this normal process of oxidative phosphorylation decreasing or shutting down. And that, Dr. Warburg found, is when a cell turns cancerous. When this gets shut down and cut off, it has to go this way. 
When cancer is favored over normal processes, this road is closed off and then traffic, biochemical traffic that is, gets detoured over this way, a pathway that favors cancer. When things go well, on the other hand, we get the normal process coming this way. Now, I am not saying that vitamins B2 or B3 are the only ways to help prevent cancer, not at all, but from Dr. Warburg's work, we have learned that they play a role, a very important role, in diverting body resources away from the cancerous process. And that is where the crucial difference of cancer versus non-cancer begins, right here at the electron transfer chain. If you wish to supplement B vitamins, please see a naturopathic physician near you. In the meantime, here are some foods that are high in vitamin B2, or riboflavin, liver, beef, and salmon, milk, yogurt, and eggs, almonds, quinoa, and green vegetables. And here are some foods that are high in vitamin B3, also called niacin, turkey and chicken, liver and beef, peanuts, and peas. I'm Dr. Colleen Huber. It's April 18, 2018, and thanks for watching.